In this video, we're going to learn five different sound effects. The muted tap, open taps, tap chokes, bell taps, and zings. The first one we're going to show you is a muted tap. This is going to be at crash choke position. So the cymbals against your body, on your hips and your armpits, your fingers nice and spread out. The right hand is going to be doing all of the work for this. So this is the striking hand or the primary hand. Uh, this is going to give you that muted tap sound. Something to note about the muted tap is the closer you are to the edge of the cymbal, the higher the pitch is going to be. Further you go into your cymbal, the lower the sound is going to be. Muted taps can be used for a lot of dense notes. This is also a great way to help cymbal players with their timing because it takes a lot of the technique stress away. They can focus on when their notes are being played um, and not necessarily how. But again, it also can stand on its own to get a nice low sound uh, when you need a short sound that's very articulate and maybe in a denser setting. The next technique we're going to show you is open taps. The first one we're going to show you is at gumption crash choke position. The cymbals are going to hover just off of your body, making sure that they keep the same shape as they were, so we don't want the pinkies to flare out from the bottom or anything like that. Uh, just like muted taps, the right hand is going to be doing the striking. So you can wind up here and you're going to aim, generally speaking, two inches inside the right cymbal. Something to note here, again, just like the muted taps, is the closer you are to the edge, the brighter the sound is going to be. The further in towards the bell you are, the lower it's going to be. For different dynamics, you can change the prep for the taps. So there's kind of the equivalent to a drumming three inches right where you're starting. You can also define this as the symbol straight in front of you, so it looks just like the blade. Or even further than that, for something like double forte, the cymbals can be parallel. Now, once you play the tap, again, you're gonna be hitting that around two inches inside the right cymbal and letting that ring. Something else to note about open taps is after you strike the left cymbal with the right, that you gravitate back towards where you started from with this position. You can also play taps at vertical. This happens from A position, from same A position as uh, vertical crashes or vertical crash chokes. Uh, the right hand is gonna be doing the striking, just like the gumption taps. Uh, the left hand stays completely still, and you can do this at any dynamic that you want. The next technique we're gonna teach you is a tap choke. So this first one is gonna happen at gumption crash choke position. And nothing changes about the taps that we already showed you. So depending on what dynamic you wanna play, you can change what the preps look like. So if you wanna play pianissimo, you just pull the cymbals off your body, play a tap choke nice and soft. Bigger preps, it's gonna be louder. And then of course the biggest one being your cymbals parallel. Once you make contact with the cymbals, you then pull the cymbals straight into your body as fast as possible. One of my first cymbal techs once explained this as it should sound like shattering glass. It's very short, it's very bright. Um, this is a great place to put in music when you have big accents uh, throughout the full ensemble. Tap chokes are a great way to punctuate your music. Not only can you play tap chokes uh, down here in front of your body, but you can also play those at vertical as well. All of the same tap technique and actually vertical crash choke technique applies here. So when you're at open tap and you play the tap, your choke position is going to be the same as your vertical crash choke. So in your armpits, right in front of your body, 
making sure you're not covering your face and that your symbols are two inches apart. The next technique up is bell tap. For bell tap, the left hand's gonna stay at gumption and the right hand is going to be perpendicular to the left hand. The right symbol for this is also going to be doing all of the striking. And what we're aiming for is the front edge of the left bell. And we're trying to hit that with the edge of our right symbol. Something to note about bell tap is it gives you a nice low sound. So if that's something that you're looking for and you're scoring, this is a great technique to use. This is the standard way to play a bell tap where the left hand's at gumption and the right hand's doing the striking. But honestly, you can move these things around anywhere and play them any way that you'd like. The last technique we're gonna show you for this video is zings. So for a zing, it's most commonly played where the left hand is at gumption and the right hand is perpendicular to the left hand. The right symbol edge is going to be at the bottom of the left symbol's bell. What you're going to do is take the right symbol and essentially scrape it against the left symbol and you're going to get a nice open sound. Something to note with zings is that you can play them nice and slow and open. The sound changes depending on how much hand pressure you're putting on the cymbals itself. Just like the bell taps and taps and tap chokes, you can play these anywhere. So feel free to choose your own adventure and get creative with these zings. 